glad you could join me again today. The other day I was doing some sorting in my office, going through pieces of paper and trying to figure out where things belonged and what things need to stay and go. I'm sure you've all been there before. Well, I came across some notes that I'd taken. I don't remember when or where, but it was some notes on natural laws. And natural laws are laws that just hold true no matter what, like the law of gravity. They never change. And my notes uh, listed 10 natural laws that if we will implement them, they will result in growth and personal development in any area, no matter where we apply them. So if you're a student or a worker, a mother, a minister, or any place in life, these laws always hold true. So I thought today we'd just look at these 10 briefly. The first law is that you control your life by controlling your time. You know, there are a lot of Bible verses that talk about the time teaching us to number our days and to apply our hearts unto wisdom and to be circumspect, all these different verses that shows that time management is the wisest way forward in any situation. The second law is that your governing values are the foundation of personal success and fulfillment. And you know, Joshua 1, 8 tells us that this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but we should meditate therein day and night and observe the things that are there so that we can have a good success. And the same things are taught in the book of Proverbs. Psalms 1 teaches the same thing. And also the story of the man who built his house upon the rock and the man who built his house upon the sand. It's a question that says, what are we building our life upon? So these governing values, these things that we find the, the deepest um, foundations of our life, these are the things that give us personal success and fulfillment if they're built on the right place. The third law is that you gain inner peace when daily activities reflect your governing values. And why does that happen? Because if we're working against them, we are merely vexing our souls by living outside of our values. It's a constant battle then, and guilt and different things come in. So if we want to have peace in our life, we need to live according to the values that we hold dear, that we believe on, that we're building upon. The fourth law is you must leave your comfort zone to reach any significant goal. And oh, how we try to avoid this one, don't we? But God is continually giving us scripture that tells us to go, to love, to press toward the mark, to hazard our lives for Christ. And you know, you can't get anywhere in life just sitting in a rocking chair. So we have to take risks. We have to step outside of our comfort zone and live by faith instead of by sight. Law five is that says that consistent daily planning leverages time and increases focus. I liked this one because this is a verse and this teaching has been something that's really been on my heart and mind all through the COVID time and things like that, that I needed to have a daily plan. Without a plan, nothing happens. But with a plan, I can leverage my time and I can increase my focus. Proverbs 16, three says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. And I use this verse almost daily as a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please take my day and show me how best to use it. And Proverbs 17, 24 taught me another truth. It reads, wisdom is before him that hath understanding and the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. And to me, this verse says, concentrate, Gail. <laughs> Stop looking at everything else and focus on what's right before you. So it's a matter of leveraging my time and increasing my focus by being consistent in what I do each day. The sixth law is that your behavior is a reflection of what you truly believe. We know the Bible says that what's in our heart comes out in our mouth. It also comes out in our actions. And if we believe, for example, that kindness is important, then we will speak with kindness. If we believe that forgiveness is the key to peace, then we will seek forgiveness. We will be forgiving. And we get just a host of qualities, both positive and negative, that can be reflected by our behavior. And this is called a call to self-control. That the Bible says it's there's no law against self-control. So it's important that we look and see uh, what's being reflected by our behavior and what we truly believe is coming out. And if we have a, a balanced inner life, we will have a balanced outer life. The seventh law is you satisfy needs when your beliefs are in line with reality. And this can be a really hard one because it says that we will find satisfaction when we live in reality instead of in drama and trauma. When we use God's word to, to find truth, we're going to find stability. 
And I think that's a very important thing because when we think about that, if we want to have a satisfied life, then we can't be living with the fairies, can we? We've got to see what life really is and deal with the situations that come along in real time and with balance and wisdom. The eighth law says that negative behaviors are overcome by changing incorrect beliefs. And this is another hard one. We sometimes don't realize the false beliefs that we hold. But mistaken beliefs or ideals, they, they create wrong responses. And then we wonder why things aren't going the way they should. And so we're best to be double-checking ourselves, just discovering God's truth and adjusting our belief system to His, rather than doggedly holding on to a destructive belief. It's an idea of submission, isn't it? Watching out for negative behaviors that God says are not what we need to have and changing, being willing to change our beliefs to his. The ninth law is that your self-esteem must ultimately come from within. And I think there's two ways to look at this. And Proverbs 14, 14 says, A good man shall be satisfied from himself. And to me, this means that we can find personal satisfaction and self-esteem, if that's what we're looking for, by knowing that we're doing right, by knowing that we are a good person. We can rest in that, that we've done right. But ultimately, our self-esteem comes from who or whom is within us, Christ, and our position in Him. When we rest ourselves there, we can find the self-esteem if we want to use that word, but the idea of the fact that we have value, we have equal access, equal value, equal accountability, we have a position in Christ and we can live there. And then the tenth law that I found on this little piece of paper said, give more and you'll have more. And that is a fantastic truth. Proverbs 11, 24, 25 reads, there is that scattereth and yet increaseth and there is that withholdeth more that is meat but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. God is teaching us to give liberally, not to hoard or withhold. And why? Because it is God that gives the increase. He gives good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, the Bible says, and because he loves a cheerful giver. So stinginess won't get you anywhere. It just holds back the blessings. But giving gives you a blessing. So be generous and God can bless you. You know, successful and happy people have discovered these 10 laws. They already live within them. And they know that a haphazard life will not result in the growth or the personal development that they desire. So they conduct themselves by these laws, positioning themselves into a place of blessing. It's not rocket science, is it? There's another natural law that God says that whatsoever you sow, that will you reap. So that doesn't change either. So what are we sowing and what are we reaping? It's a really good judge, a really good way to look at what we're doing. And it might be time for us to refer back to laws seven and eight and see what we need to change. Or maybe we need to do some sorting of our time and our priorities in order to position ourselves back into the path of success. So wherever you are today, now is the accepted time to push that reset button and get back to growth by looking at God's natural laws that he's given us and bringing ourselves in line. I'll see you next week.